Hey guys, it's Taya and welcome back to my channel. Before we continue on with the rest of the video, I would just like to give a shout out to one of my Instagram followers and subscribers named Brooklyn Dice. Go give her a follow if you would like to. Today I have a pretty interesting video for you guys and as you can tell from the title it is all about famous people who stutter. And I really wanted to do this video because I just find it very inspirational to kind of hear about people who are successful in their careers and kind of doing things although they may have a disability like a stutter. It's just very inspiring and can really uplift people who are suffering from a stutter or any kind of disability like that. So let's get right on into it. So the first person I'm going to be talking about is probably the biggest well-known stutterer on this list, and that is King George VI. Now, King George was the king of the United Kingdom from 1936 until his death in 1952. And his daughter is actually the Queen of England at the moment, and that is Queen Elizabeth II. He developed a stutter around the age of eight, and because of this, he really developed a shy personality, and I feel like that happens with a lot of people who stutter. This shy personality and stutter really continued throughout the rest of his life. And as you can imagine, being a king who stutters would be a very, very stressful situation. He had to perform a lot of speeches in front of many, many people. And during these speeches, he stuttered quite often. And as you can imagine, it would be pretty embarrassing. He went through many, many types of speech therapy, but it all ended up failing. He never really improved and he didn't really like the speech therapy he was receiving until 1926 when he met a very unique speech therapist named Lionel Logue. And he did very unique ways of improving his speech. He overall like improved his confidence as well, but I'm going to list off the techniques that he used. Now just keep in mind, this was in the 1920s, so some of these techniques would not be appropriate today. So let me just list those off. They used breathing techniques, speaking about his psychological issues, gargling warm water, intoning vowels with a loud voice. They would also practice prolonging vowels up to 15 seconds, and they would say tongue twisters and also strengthen his diaphragm. And the way that they strengthened his diaphragm would is that they would have somebody sit on his stomach while he spoke. Now, obviously, that would not be appropriate today, and I don't even know if that worked, but that was one of the unique things that Lionel Logue did. His stutter never fully went away, but it got good enough that he could perform his speeches in a clear way that people could understand him. And there was a quote by King George VI saying that, um, saying that speech therapy is an ongoing process. So that is the stuttering story of King George VI. Now let's move on to the next person. Now, the next person, I actually don't have a ton of information about his stutter because he is an athlete and I feel like with athletes, they don't really have to speak much, so they don't really speak openly about their stutter. They would probably rather speak more about the sport, but I'm going to be talking about Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods is an American professional golfer and one of the highest paid and most successful golfer for the past several years now. He started professional golfing only at the age of 20 years old, and that was in 1996. Since then, he has won 18 World Golf Championships. He developed a stutter as a child, and after lots of hard work and determination, as well as, as, well as speech therapy, he got over this stutter. Now, I'm not sure if this means that his stutter is still kind of going on a little bit now, or if it's like completely gone, but I still find this story inspirational because he still conquered his 
fear and is doing something successful that he wanted to do. Now there was a quote by Tiger Woods that I'm going to read right now. The words got lost, you know, somewhere between the brain and the mouth, and it was very difficult, but I fought through it. I went to a school to try and get over that and I would just work my tail off. Now I was a little bit confused at the part where he says he went to a school to, to, to get over this. I'm not sure if he means that he went to like maybe a speech therapy school or he just went to regular school where he um, was taught how to speak, speak clearly. I don't know. But nonetheless, it's still an inspirational story. Next, we're going to be talking about a brother and sister duo who both suffered with stuttering, and that is Julia and Eric Roberts. Now you probably are now you probably know of Julia Roberts because she is a big Hollywood star and probably one of the most successful actresses of the decade. Julia first became a big Hollywood star after her movie Pretty Woman came out in 1990. Since then, she has won three golden and Globe Awards and has been nominated for eight. Julia and Eric both suffered with stuttering as a child and they believe it to be a genetic disorder. Eric's stutter though was significantly worse than Julia's and he really sp and he really speaks openly about this. He said that he really turned to books as a way to escape since he kind of grew up being a shy and quiet child because of his stutter, so books were kind of a way to escape. After a while, he realized that when he memorized words, he didn't stutter. And as a result of this, he kind of turned to acting. And since then, he has been in many movies, including The Dark Knight and The Expendables. And I find that very interesting. Um, I used to be into acting as well as a child, and I found that when I memorized words, I didn't stutter either. But eventually, as it got worse, um, that didn't <laughs> continue on. But I find that very interesting because I can relate. Now, the next person I'm going to be talking about is Joe Biden, and he was the 47th Vice President of the United States from 2009 to 2017. He he is currently married with four kids and has been involved with politics for the majority of his life. His stutter began in childhood and continued throughout his 20s. He never really had in any form of like formal speech therapy, but local nuns in the area taught him to put a cadence into his speech to kind of improve his stutter. And I actually had to look up what cadence meant because I had no clue. So a cadence is a modulation or inflection of the voice. So I think that kind of means when you are speaking, you will go like higher or, or lower or emphasize certain words. And I actually find that that's a good strategy to use to get ri rid of my stutter as well. So because because he was taught to um, practice putting a cadence into his speech, he really turned to poetry. And as you know, poetry really has like rhyming words and you put emphasis on certain words. So that really helped to improve his stutter. Trying to control because when you stutter, it's the most debilitating thing. I mean, yeah. people, it's hard to ask you to go to the prom right. and they look at you yeah. and they go, "You, this must be a... This, this guy must be an idiot or so I would what I would do is I would try to get a rhythm so I wouldn't contort my face you know? he has been quoted saying that he is very grateful for his stutter because overcoming the disability and kind of having the outcast status really made him stronger as a person and more empathetic later in life and I have a quote from him as well I really like saying quotes because it's directly from the person and I just find it very inspirational. So he says, time and time again, my parents taught me that being different is no barrier to success. The measure of a man isn't how often he is knocked down, but how quickly he gets up. Now we're going to move on to the next person who has a stutter and that is Samuel L. Jackson. Now he is an American actor and producer and started gaining popularity in the early 1990s. 
He grew up with a stutter that continued into adulthood. Um, one time it got so bad that he barely spoke for an entire year at school. During speech therapy sessions, he was taught to use breathing techniques, and for some strange reason, he also found that swearing really made his stutter lessen a lot. And my theory behind why swearing helps is that I think it releases a lot of anger and frustration, and then you feel kind of relieved afterwards so that so then your anxiety is lessened and then your speech is a lot better but I mean I don't know that's just my theory he started acting in school plays as a child and quickly found a love for it um, some days he says that he still can't pronounce certain letters and still substitutes words every once in a while. And I find that very interesting because you can't really tell at all that he has a stutter, although he still has some of these symptoms of a stutterer. And a quote by Samuel L. Jackson says, I was on the set of Captain America and they said, action. And I said, g g g get. It was a G day, so I have my days. I have G days, I have P days, I have B days, I have S days, and I am still stuttering. But I figured out a way to get through it. Alright, cool. The next person I'm going to be talking about has spoken openly about his stutter and has actually been to a couple stuttering um, association. I'm not sure if they're like conventions or award shows, but I'm going to be talking about Ed Sheeran. He is a British singer-songwriter who started getting popular in 2011 after releasing, after releasing his album Plus. Since then, he has won many awards, and I'm going to read off some of the awards that he's won just to kind of give you an idea of how successful he is if you haven't already heard of him. He has won American Music Awards, iHeart I Radio Music Awards, three Billboard Music Awards, and many more. He developed a stutter at a young age and really describes himself as an odd child growing up. He was a bit of an outcast and really stood out from the crowd. And as you can see from these pictures, he, he looks like a typical nerd and I find that so cute. Since he had a stutter, he really turned towards music as kind of an escape because as most stutterers do, we do, we do, t as most stutterers, we don't stutter when, when we sing. So he turned towards rap m music, specifically Eminem, to get rid of his stutter and relieve himself from that difficulty for a while. Stuttering is not, is not a thing you have to be worried about at all. And even if you have quirks and weirdness, you shouldn't be worried about that. I think the mo the people that I went to school with were the, were, the, were the most normal and were the coolest when we grew up. Like I was telling Emily earlier that uh, one of the cool kids from school now does my plumbing. So that's, <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. So. And since he turned towards rap music, he eventually found a love for it and started making music on his own. He, eventually his stutter l l lessened and although you can sometimes hear it in certain interviews of his, it has really improved since childhood. And here is a quote from Ed Sheeran that says, Everything you think that is wrong with you is actually right with you. Because that makes you an individual and that makes you an even more interesting human being. Now the next person that I'm going to be talking about is Steve Harvey. He is an American producer, actor, and has hosted many reality competition TV shows. As a young boy, he suffered with a stutter. And one time when he was at school, he stuttered on the word volcano. And since that day, many people at school gave him the nickname of Vava Voom. Even the counterman at the local deli seemed to mock him. But he also told him that if his speech improved, then he would reward him with a candy bar. So after lots of hard work, he found a technique that worked for him. And that was to say it three times to yourself, take your time and speak on an exhale. Eventually his stutter really decreased and the deli man rewarded him with a candy bar. And I find that story so inspirational and cute. <laughs> so his stutter isn't fully gone now. 
now, but it has really improved since childhood and I just find that so cool. So now the next two people I'm going to be talking about do not really have a ton of information about their stutter because these two individuals were, were popular during the 50s and I find that during this time differences weren't as widely accepted as they are today so I only have a little bit of information. So the first person I'm going to be talking about is Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe was an American actress, model, and singer during the 1950s up until her unexpected death in 1962. She was one of the most top-billed and successful actresses of her time and starred in 30 films. She is still a popular icon today and Marilyn's breathy, iconic voice was actually a result of a childhood stutter. The actress started stuttering during childhood, it went away and then it returned in high school. Going to a speech therapist really helped her to improve her speech and they practiced a lot with breathing techniques and as a result of that came along her iconic breathy voice. Near the end of Marilyn's life, she was filming a movie called Something's Got to Give, where the stress of her personal life was really making her stutter come out more, and there were many scenes where she couldn't get a word or a sentence out, so it took lots of re-filming to get it to work. She has been quoted saying that it was painful to have to go through such difficulty. They now have a technique called the Marilyn Monroe voice to help stutterers across America. The next and last person I'm going to be talking about is Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley was an American singer and actor and regarded as one of the most significant cultural icons of the 20th century. He is often referred to as the king of rock and roll. He made music from 1956 up until 1977 and has starred in 31 movies. Elvis was a very shy boy during high school. It has been noted that he didn't really socialize much. And when he did, he had a stutter in his speech. It was never said whether the stutter was mild or severe, but he was definitely seen as a unique person throughout school. Elvis has talked about his stutter saying, Whenever I get excited, I stutter a little bit. I have a hard time saying when or where and any words starting with W or I. There are many clips where you can clearly hear him stuttering. And here are a few. We got a song right now, friends, that we would like to do for you. We ain't been doing it, but, 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 yeah. And, uh, uh I, I like to say, uh, the word, that, uh, uh, let's see, what would I like to say? Uh, I'd, I'd like to say that we have a, a diamond ring that we're going to uh, have as a door prize. Uh -huh. uh, it's my initial ring. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I actually really liked researching and finding out different techniques to improve my stutter that have helped other people in the past. And it's also very inspirational to just hear stories of people being successful although they have a disability of some sorts. So if you guys would like me to do maybe a part two t t to this because there is a very long list of people who stutter and I'm going to leave a link below to a list of, because of course I couldn't talk about every single person. So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you very very soon. Bye.